Good afternoon, Zachariah Jackson, Bassa News. You know, we often talk about Africa and uh, we talk about the connection between the black American and the African. Well, this here is more of a cousin than just a connection, you know, Amen. because um, today we want, we're going to explore the history, we're going to touch on and explore the history of Liberia. And uh, Reverend Daniel, will you introduce yourself? Yes, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Uh, Zachariah Jackson. I'm Reverend Daniel Cooper. I, uh, most people know me politically by the name of Daniel Theophilus Cooper. Uh, born in Liberia, uh, January 17, 1952. And I was fortunate to have uh, served in uh, many capacities or, uh, to the upliftment and improvement of conditions in uh, Liberia. And ultimately, I'm now a uh, minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, where I consider my greatest job and achievement in life. Reverend, if you mind me calling you Reverend. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, can you tell us some things about the history of Liberia and how it got started? I think that the general audience would like to know that. Yeah. Liberia was founded by the free American slaves, children of white slave masters that uh, had that burning desire to go back to Africa. Okay. Uh, knowing the uh, very uh, unpleasant situation in America. And we know that the American Colonization Society, thank God, would very instrumental sure. in uh, putting together the Elizabeth, the Nautilus, and uh, other vessels to take those who wanted to go back to Africa. Uh, Liberia was uh, founded in 1847, became independent. Okay. And uh, our first six presidents were born in Virginia to show you that uh, for those days you didn't go four years and things. But uh, the history is very unique all the way down to President Roosevelt because uh, even during World War II. But that's the basic connection. Sure. The sure. basic connection. Well, okay. Now, you know, to help out a little bit on what you were saying, uh, that you can give us a little bit more information on. Now, you say the freed blacks. So the country was founded in 1840 what? Seven. 1847. Right. So, okay, I'm going to ask, how would, because I know 1847, my relatives in Georgia was not free. Okay. They were still on plantation. Right. So who were these free blacks here? Or how did they become free? Well, uh, basically, I uh, am not... Uh, an expert when it comes to American history. Sure. But uh, as we know, uh, poems from Langston Hughes and others are uh, telling us about uh, one of them, my, uh, my father is white, my mother is black, we live in a hut, and we have to live, you know, work, uh, sure. wait for the leftover. So uh, these are, and history tells us that many sections of America uh, you had certain African Americans or black Americans that uh, were more privileged than others and even before Juneteenth, uh, all like that. But uh, uh, these were <clears throat> basically children of white slave masters. Okay. And uh, it was also tied in with uh, Marcus Garvey and others who were instrumental in uh, our, uh, uh, making this trip to Africa in reality. Okay, so when they chose Liberia, that, that section, Liberia, uh, a great part of it, 20% of it is on the Atlantic Ocean, is that correct? Yeah. So you guys have big ports. That's correct. You know, you're not landlocked. No, no, no. At no. all. At not all. at all. Wow. And so, 
uh, with that being said, like, were there people in Liberia already? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Of course, uh, the natives were there. Okay, the, the native na tribes. Yes. Okay. They were there, and uh, we have stories about uh, uh, negotiating with the different tribal chiefs. Okay. Uh, King Peter and others, and uh, to really settle in different areas. But uh, the influence of the American Colonization sure. Society and in uh, really uh, giving the uh, African Americans or black Americans that went back, giving them a very smooth transition and a smooth uh, uh, establishment. Sure. They were very instrumental in uh, uh, establishing mutual cooperation with the tribal chiefs. Okay, l l l let's be a little bit more clear. Are, are we saying that the American, the black Americans that left here to go to Liberia, were, were they considered mulatto? Mm -hmm. Yes, there was a mixture of uh, mulattoes. A great many of them. Yes. Okay. A uh, mulattoes, the first, uh, in fact, the first six and others, you cannot tell because those days there were black and white uh, uh, pictures. Sure. And you really can't tell, many of them look white. Sure, sure. Uh, they were high mulattoes. Yes. High mulattoes, very uh, determined uh, people, Joseph Jenkins, Robert, Stephen Allen Benson, Daniel B. Warner, James Spring Spain, okay. and all went over. those are the presidents? Uh -huh. That you just Yes, met. yes. Those are the presidents, okay. And they were very, uh, strong-minded people who were determined to establish their own government. And they did not really deviate from uh, the American uh, uh, society. Okay. The flag, the three branches of government still exist, the executive, the legislature, the judiciary. And uh, so Liberia really uh, known to be called uh, uh, small America, small New York. They didn't forget because Liberia has a Maryland, a place called Maryland. Those like who in left, Maryland, right. Okay. Yes. Like I'll stay here. Right. 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 Those who left from Georgia, they call it New Georgia. Oh, okay. And wow. Yeah, we have, uh, we have also uh, Monrovia, the capital, named after President James Monroe. Monroe. Okay. And also you have uh, many areas there that uh, uh, Virginia, we have Virginia, sure, sure. those who left from Virginia. So uh, it is just sad that uh, African Americans and Liberians have not really intensified that uh, union or sure. connection. Well, well, let me ask you this right here, okay. So when the black Americans, I'm going to call them black Americans because at this point of challenge, that's what they were. When the black Amer Americans, uh, was uh, going with the Colonial Society to colonize that part of the world, which is Liberia today. Uh, how many were, were there? Were there, was there a, a million of them? Were there thousands or what? I would say thousands or not a million. Uh, it was, uh, if they had different, they made up to, as we know, basically up of four different trips. And, uh, do, you, do you know the years of the trips? I have days in history, but like I say, I, I my son is a historian. Or, oh, okay. did, yeah, it him, did it take him 20 years or did it take Oh, him? no, no, just, uh, I believe within uh, maybe a seven year period there were many trips that were made. Wow. And could you go as, like, were people especially selected or, or was it a lottery or, you know, how did one get to go back? You know, I mean, if we're talking about hundreds of thousands of black Americans, uh, mulatto or not, someone had to be on the plantation. So how did they lure, lure that? Did they pay the slave masters off from the slaves and send them there? Or how did that come about? That's a good question, uh, uh, Mr. Zachariah Jackson. It's a good question. Like I say, I am not so versed in American history. Sure. And so uh, what really uh, uh, contributed 
uh, to the uh, smooth uh, transportation of uh, black Americans. I don't want to say uh, things that are not true. Sure, sure, you sure. Know? So when it comes to Liberian history, okay. I know more about that. Okay. Uh, but I know that, uh, and my son, uh, he's, uh, uh, in fact, he scored the highest in history here at St. Anthony, and he's now a doctor, Donald Cooper. And, uh, but he is more, he can teach me history yeah. and American history. So let me ask you this right here now. I, I will say this. In my lifetime, I ran into a Liberian, and it had to be around 1986. And I believe the young man I ran into, he fought in some kind of war over there. Mm -hmm. And he said that he was kin to the natives, not the black Americans. Mm -hmm. So in your genealogy, mm -hmm. are, you con are you considered the native from a native tribe, or did you come from uh, offspring somehow through the black Americans? That's a very good question. Yes. As I said, uh, in fact, William Tupman, who uh, ascended to uh, the office of president in 1944, okay. he was the first to bring about uh, uh, the unification policy. This was uh, bringing in the Aborigines and the black Americans to come together. Uh, for me, my mother and my dad were Aborigines. Okay. My dad was adopted by the Coopers that came from Virginia. Okay, okay. Yes. he was adopted by them. Yes, okay. and uh, he was adopted and uh, educated. He, uh, went to school, was a brilliant man. He became Solicitor General, acting Attorney General, and he held so many different, but, yes, uh, yeah. and that was, like I said, unification, William Tupman established a unification and integration policy. It was bringing in the tribal people. Bring them in. Yes. Almost like uh, in America where we would get rid of the Jim Crow right. law and bringing us into society. Yes. Integrating. Yes. Integrating. Now, in this case here, you had black folk, right? right. Let, let's, let's, take the, let's roll the sleeves up, because this is what this is about. We want to teach. We want to really, really teach. We want to talk, talk some truth. We roll the sleeves up. So you had black folk that was from the Virginias, from the Maryland, from the state of Georgia, where right. my right. ancestry come from. Right. And you have them over there with almost the same system or the exact same system here, but you had black folk in Liberia, uh, the Afro-American, I believe I referred to them as, the Afro-American at the time discriminating against the natives. Yes. Uh, we're saying that. So they were, it was almost like catch one two, which the same thing happened here yeah. with the white folks against us. It was the black folk yeah. against them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that's... Uh it's very sad, and uh, as a, a minister of the gospel yeah. of uh, Jesus Christ, yes. we know that uh, uh, Jeremiah 17, 9 says that the heart of man is desperately wicked and deceitful. Sure. Who can know it except God? And Second Corinthians 4, 4 also tells us that the minds of men become blinded by the power of darkness. Sure. They cannot see the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in that process, people, like even the colonialists, mm -hmm. fought over money and wealth. And so, uh, like all human beings, some become greedy and, of course, selfish. Mm -hmm. So what happened, they oppress. Sure. Uh, those who were... Uh, they oppressed uh, the native people. Yes. The yes. black um, the Americans from here. Yes, yes. Afro-Americans. Right. They came in with the same American system. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So then, uh, in 1980, right, there was some kind of revolution there. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. So, with that, I, I guess I want to ask, did they ever... Uh, actually fully integrate the mm -hmm. country? 
No, no. So today, today, Rev, mm -hmm. you still have people that consider from the Afro-American tribes, mm -hmm. Afro-American group that mm -hmm. come from the Virginia, mm -hmm. the Maryland, the Georgia, and the right. different states of New America, and you still have those as natives. Yeah. Now, how do they get along? Well, I tell you, all through the the uh, the process yes. and the history, mm -hmm. it was uh, what you call uh, uh, American Liberians were in control. American Liberians, that's yes. what I Black Americans were in control. Sure. And uh, the Aborigines, the natives. The natives. Yes. Uh, were more or less, uh, uh, I don't like to say very gross words, but... Uh, oppressed. Yes, they were oppressed, and that was one of the reasons why uh, uh, that civil war was so bloody, because uh, even though there are other factors that mm -hmm. contributed to the civil war, because I was there, I was there, and of course I was there when the unemployment went up to... 50 percent okay. and the tension was building up so we knew because I was fortunate to have worked for the president who was assassinated and, and call his name please. Oh, William uh, Richard Talbot, Talbot. Jr. Jr. Yes okay. and I say this because I am not a sycophant I'm not uh, in fact that's how I got close to the president because I knew his son and he saw me to be someone who was not about your know, status, you know, sure. all like that. So he was able to introduce me to his dad, the three of us okay. in the mansion. And so, uh, but there were tension, as I said, building up, and unemployment was very, 50%. And uh, so we had uh, his, his uh, godson, as we, we know, uh, who was leaving America, we were all in school at the College of West Africa, they call it those days, a very brilliant, dynamic fellow called uh, Gabriel Matthews. Okay. And he told his god uh, uh, dad that uh, he wanted to form another political party because Liberia had a one-party system sure. for a long time. Which was Afro-American. Yes, basically. Mm -hmm. That was the true Whig party. True Whig party. Yeah. Uh, w H I G, and uh, they were in uh, the party existed for because I was there and when I worked for the president I was also part of the party. In fact, uh, in the beginning I served under the uh, the SSS Special Security Service. Okay. But uh, I was transferred to the political party okay. because I was promoting the administration of the president. And at that point in challenge, mm -hmm. when you were in the party, what was your relationship with those that were Afro-American, or as you say, uh, American Liberians? What was your, because you come from the native class. Yes, but I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> There's so many stories. Uh, you know, uh, all over the world, even in the class system, yes. you have uh, nomenclature. The name makes a difference. Now, even though my mother and father were natives, sure. Aborigines, uh, my mother was adopted by the Coopers. Uh, no, first, no, my dad was dad adopted, was but my mother was adopted by President Daniel Edward Howard. Okay. In fact, she named me after the President okay. Daniel. Dang. Okay. Yes. But it happened, I would say, God made it that way because so many did not have that blessing or that, you know, to have been within the hierarchy of the black Americans. Sure. So, 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 so here's what I'm trying to get to this, so the people can see this right yeah. here. So there was actually a hierarchy there as, uh, because, you know, my family come out of Georgia, right? right. And I would say the hierarchy white middle class and, and rich whites. Mm -hmm. So that same kind of hierarchy, but it was the Afro-American. 
So, what was their exchange of, like, you know, because even though that they were, a, a good many of them was mulatto, mm -hmm. but they could still, like, produce a child that looked like us. Mm -hmm. So you had that. Like, my mother was very, very fair-skinned. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if it was 1950, you wouldn't probably believe that she was my mother. You understand? Right, right. My father said she looked like a white woman. Right. You understand yeah, what I mean? Man, I you know what I mean? So, but then we came out, and I have a brother that was real light, of two two brothers that was light, and a sister mm -hmm. that was light. But the rest of us came out like my dad. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, my thing is, uh, what I'm trying to, I guess, get across to the people mm -hmm. that's sure, listening to sure. this program. Uh, could see that. So, I know myself when we first begin to really interact with white folks, right? We were cautious on certain things, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and things of that nature. Uh, and we were, you know, I guess a little insecure too, because we had to learn them as they had to learn us. Right. But us learning them meant like a move up to another level. Mm -hmm. But you're saying, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. in Liberia, mm -hmm. that a move up would be, you're moving up, but you're black and they're black. Yes, yes. But they have a different class. Right. Okay. And things. And they could have had, I'm sure, would come along with that, would be uh, negativity toward what you call the natives. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's not cutting you off, but uh, that's a very important, like I say, in the process of miscegenation, where you had uh, intermarriages, sure. and the process of, uh, like, on my part, I had the name of, of a black American. Right. Cooper. Cooper. So it was not, I just went, the, the color, like you said, you, your mother was a fair yeah, color, very, but, very cool. so the color was not really the uh, ultimate determinator. It was uh, the name. But in a case like this, let yeah. me interject here. Mm -hmm. Because they because they were natives, yes. let's say the natives, yeah. they couldn't at that point in challenge produce that light color. Right. Unless they married someone white or what have you. At that point in challenge because they were natives. Now, right. these people that come from the Afro-Americans, mm -hmm. right, where they had a um, biological father probably was white mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. or some, in some cases, biological mother right, right. and things of that nature. They went as mulatto mm -hmm. and things here and stuff of that nature. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that, and, and I'm going to do, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to stop here with this here. I'm going to do, I'm going to try to go to Congressional, Congressional Library in Washington right, so right. to look this up. Right. Is that, um, I don't know that those that came, that was chosen, uh, how, how they was chosen to go to Liberia mm -hmm. uh, um, with the um, colonization society. And I don't know, were, did they ever uh, uh, do plantation time? It, were they, the, the blacks that left here in America, mm -hmm. were they, like my family that was on a plantation? Mm -hmm. Or were they, you know, privileged here also? Yeah, I think uh, a, good, a mixture, I believe, because uh, uh, those that settle in Liberia, sure. are, uh, yes, it took a long time because even when Tupman took over, yes. the budget was uh, was not even a million dollars, and so <laughs> you know, so it took uh, some time. Uh, Firestone Company uh, established the largest rubber plantation, yes. you know, and all like that. But uh, to as far as uh, the Firestone and Bridgestone was your biggest employer because Bridgestone is a division of Firestone. Right, right, okay. right. Okay. But okay. like, uh, uh, based on uh, the last question about. Uh, the interaction. Yes, that's why I'm very interested. Yes, in that right between uh, African Americans and uh, I'll well, give you a tip. Well, at that time, I think that, that we, we would just call them Afro American. Okay, Afro. Because we're going to kind of mix the audience up with the language of today. You know, yeah. We're talking the language of right. uh, 
1848. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Afro, I hear you. <laughs> you understand? Amen. We're, we're trying to keep it clear. Yes. So but, Afro. Right. Right. Afro-American. Well, let me, let me hit this nail on the head to answer this question because yes. uh, in the process of miscegenation, sure. intermarriages, we have uh, different names that come to play. Sure. Like, I give you a typical example. Some of the natives married the daughters of Afro-Americans. Okay, now how, explain how did, that, how did that come about? Well, I mean, uh, some, A, uh, like somebody that uh, makes it clear that you can take a bird from Africa and take it to America or to India, that bird can build the same nest. Sure. So you have God gave, he's not a respecter of persons, and sure. the poorest man sure. can have that acumen or that ability to become rich yes. and go and get into the diamonds because the country was rich. Sure. So I'll give you a typical example. One of my dear friends, in fact, I eulogized him uh, two years ago in Delaware. His dad was a complete native with a name that was very, very uh, popular. Okay. Call them uh, the Mulbas. But the Mulbas were from a tribe, the Lomons and the Boozies. And so uh, everybody knew that tribe. Mm -hmm. But at one point, the children were going to school now. Sure. Because we have a, uh, we had a judge called uh, uh, Judge Jala, and that particular name was, but he was so brilliant that the name, he became a legend. Sure. So, but this Malba was married to a Mesco, a beautiful light-skinned African-American. Okay. And they had beautiful children, but they were carrying the daddy's name, Malba. Okay. And I tell Which you, is a native name. Yes, okay. and I tell you what, what his son told me before he left this world. He said, uh, Rebbe, I suffered with my dad's name. In Liberia? Yes, he said, I, that name cost me much, much. He said, even when I went to college, he worked for an African American. He was manager of his rock plantation, or what, okay. rock factory. And he said that uh, uh, he had his own office as manager because sure. he was a millionaire. He said, and one of uh, his friends came by and mm -hmm. saw him in the office, and he one said, "One of his native friends." Yes. Okay. No, one of the Afro. Uh, yeah. The Afro. Yeah. Okay. With the the president of the company, they sure. were friends, and he came in and saw this handsome uh, fella sure. whose sure. dad was a Mulba, which is mm -hmm. a native name, but. Everyone knew when you heard that name that, hey, that was an inferior. If you, if you were not thinking godly, you would say he's monster. And, 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 and let's, let's, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to take the Bible and rest, okay, okay, rest okay, it on okay, the corner. Okay. Yes, or rest yes. It on the table. Okay, right. But we know human beings. Right. Okay. Right. We know human beings. Yes. And even with the Bible, the people put chains on you. Yes. The Bible don't say it. But they do it in the name of something yes, 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 in the Bible. Yes. So what I want to really stick to the principles right, right. of that government that right. came in there and the Afro uh, American at the time and and see I, I, what, what pitch I'm trying to trying to trying to uh, pitch I'm trying to paint here so my viewers can see is that. Because some of us will say this right here, how in the hell could this be? <laughs> you understand? Right. Some of the black Americans right. would say that right there, go, how could this be? So when they built that system mm -hmm. over there, that government over there, mm -hmm. that anything native, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. was considered inferior. Mm -hmm. So if your name was uh, Shaka Zulu or whatever right. the case may be, you wouldn't, or Kalunga, mm -hmm. you wouldn't you know, you was deemed a negative mm -hmm. as my forebears in Georgia as black Martians. Mm -hmm. They were by 
law, mm -hmm. it was written in the law that mm -hmm. they were two, three-fifths of a man and things of that nature. Right, right. So in Liberia, this same behavior happened. And I know it's, I guess it's hard for you to talk about this, I see. Oh, no, but, no, no. As for but, me, my job is to live by the truth. Yes. And I get... Uh, Hated uh, sometimes, but uh, I make name. Uh, I base my life on the truth, and I all my life I have hated uh, injustice sure, and sure. unfair play. Sure. Because when I worked for the president William Richard Talbot, Jr., I remember during 1979. Uh, okay. He was president of the. All Africa's African Organization of African Union, or you. Okay. And I was then heading an entity that was promoting his administration. So we were preparing sure. for this big conference of all presidents coming in. All presidents from Africa. Right. Okay. So I asked the president for job for the poor people, labor contract. I said, let's start cleaning up the city. Sure. And because they're coming, so we organized the Shushan Boy, Boys Association, and okay. dressed them up in three-piece suits okay. and paraded them with a police band, and it was like wildfire. But I said this to say that i always been uh, concerned, and I don't like the word I, I, me, me, my, mind, but uh, what's in me sure. was not to discriminate. So I would go into the villages like Vi Town and Logan Town and say, Gentlemen, all those you want job, I got job for you. You will eat everything. You join these engineers or all these, you know, and uh, that's what I did. So you basically, uh, for the, for the audience, you went into the native villages, and when you went into, am I am I correct? Yes, correct, right, right, right. The poor okay. people, which poor, basically, which is yeah, yeah. Okay. So in other words, in and in, in a way, you kind of serve almost like Moses because. When uh, Moses um, watered those sheep for those young ladies, and they said that uh, went back and told their father, said the, the Egyptian helped us because he was dressed in Egyptian clothes. Mm -hmm. They figured he was Egyptian and couldn't find out he was okay. he was Hebrew. So in your case, yes, yes, right, you were Hebrew, right, 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 but you posed almost as a Egyptian when you went in there, yes, and, and your last name would would dial you to what we would call an Egyptian. Yes. Okay. All yes. right. All right. Okay. So, all right. Man. So, but uh, that was uh, the way of, uh, like I said, for me, yeah, fortunately, I was under the nomenclature of Cooper. Which, which is, would be, you were adopted almost as if Moses was adopted. Right. You know, Smooth. Right. Now, you can see that picture on the wall. Uh, I was my seventh grade class at the College of West Africa. I was president of that class. Okay. But you see the president's nieces, those white, you see the color, what we're talking about now. The light skin they were doing. Can, can you grab that? Yes, those are. You, you. you see it? Okay. Sure. Okay, over here. All right, there, can, you, can you lift it off the wall? or? Sure. And let, me, let me see it here in my hand. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I have to see it. Oh, okay, okay. No, you can tell so, right there. All right, if, if I'm looking at this, this class picture. Yeah. Who in this picture is Native and who in this picture is we will call Afro-American? Now, I, I, I'm just going to quickly just say she's Afro-American. That's correct. Okay. That was the president's niece. That's president's niece. And there's also the president's niece. Right, that's president's niece. Her too. daddy was the president's uh, brother. Okay, and who is this? That's, uh, he's also, he was a Gibson, but from the Afro-American. Okay. This is a, the picture that can okay. give you the... Uh, yes, and then him. That's me. That's you. Right. Right. And, okay, this time you, you basically are flying two cultures. Yes. You're flying a native culture. Right. And an Afro. Right. Okay. And what about the young lady here? Native. native. Kofa. Uh, here. Uh... Miracle, but like I said, the color now was integration. Okay, okay. she was uh, major. They call okay. them the major because of intermarriage. Yes, they, they would produce this darker skin darker sometimes. Skin, right, yes. sometimes. Right, and right here. That's another uh, miracle mix. Okay, now Liberty. see now when you 
you're saying this thing here, right? And, yeah. and I'm hearing you, mm -hmm. right? But because my blood is here in America as a mm -hmm. black American, mm -hmm. it's almost as if, though, I would say for my own people, mm -hmm. like I would say, well, uh, the grandfather was white mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. It's almost the same gears. Yes, yes. It's almost the same gears, yes. but but still black. Yes, yes. And with that right there, still came, would come, uh, how would I say, a chip mm -hmm. on both shoulders. Yes. A chip on their shoulders because maybe they feel that they're giving too much. Right. And a chip on their shoulders because they feel that you had too much and you didn't give in the first place. That's correct. So and our president, this her, 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 her uncle was the president. Her uncle was the yeah, president. Yeah, both of them. And, uh, but the president believed in uh, what you call uh, 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 polygamy. He had many children by the women yes, on his farm. Okay. Now, the, okay, the women on his farm, and this president, is, what is his name? William Richard Talbot. Okay. Were they native? Junior. Were they native girls on the Yes. Farm? Okay. Okay. So, but with the name, as I said, the name was the really ultimate determinator. And in, in a case like this right here, Reverend, um, how many people was, if you had a lottery and it was worth thirty million, how many people stood in line to change their names? To, oh, was, that's was, that a, good was that question. a was that a that was that, another good question. That's another that's, lift that my name is Jackson now, and I'm no longer Kalunda. Yeah. But that's what happened here during the slave touch, slave, slave period. Here in America. Yeah. Names were changed. Yeah, of course. It Same was. thing with Liberia. But, but, but in this way, yes, yes, yeah. yes, names mm -hmm. were changed. Mm -hmm. But in this case here, mm -hmm. the names was changed because the black folk, mm -hmm. they're Afro-American. Right. Right. Wouldn't accept you unless you change your name. That's correct. So then, okay. It was not too different because what happened over there, the natives saw an opportunity to send their children to Monrovia, the city, right. to live with African Americans. Sure. But to more or less do their work. Sure. You would clean the floors. Sure. Sure. and everything, but you would take the name. Well, they were the middle class and they were the rich. Yes. And so uh, basically that's what that's how they send them to school, but you had to use almost nine out of ten, you had to use the name of your master. Right. Yes. Well, did they, did they consider the Afro-American as the master at that point in time? Of course. So we're talking about, because you're not 100 years old, no, How old are you? God forbid, I'm 71. Now. Okay, so you're 71. Mm -hmm. So if we back up, let's say, uh, 60 years would make you 11 mm -hmm. years old. Right. And so when you were 11 years old, did you look at the Afro-American as uh, the master? Did you, you know, in your eyes, did you look at them as way beyond you before your family, I guess it would be before your family got adopted. Yeah, but, uh, well, I'll tell you one thing too. I, you can see the little children, that's why you know you cannot underestimate even the little children. I, for me, there was, what you call, uh, look. A, a swinging door? Yeah, uh, like not like convection current, like yeah, like with me. Thank God, uh, those that adopted our dad, sure, they were they embraced us, sure. the Coopers, because the daddy was a rich lawyer, and so the daddy was a rich black lawyer. Yes. Okay. And did, did that daddy look black? Or did no, he was he was uh, he right there. Let me show you my dad also. Uh, this is my dad who was also, uh, I'll grab you here, so you can see, he's, uh, 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 this is the Cooper, their sit, family sit adopted my daddy. Sit, sit down for the camera. Yes, sure. Okay. Now, where, where's the Cooper at? This is the Cooper that That's adopted my daddy, their family. OK. 
Okay. And this is uh, my daddy here. You can That's see the difference. Okay. Uh, and then, country boy, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and and my thing, I would say, he's from Georgia. Right. Country boy from Georgia, whatever, right. uh, North Carolina, Alabama. Then who are these? Are they? They were in Europe. I think they were uh, part of the World Court. My dad was then Solicitor General. Okay. And uh, these were the brilliant lawyers. He was. He became president of the university. Brilliant fella for all the long. Now, is he from the native clan? Uh, they were. They were. They were mixed. They were the Americo. Americo. Yeah, but uh, you see, some of the slaves, uh, the children of slave masters, some went through Sierra Leone, and some had names too. Some came from the Congo, you know, and all like that. So, uh, but these. Uh, Basically, they call him, he was president of the university, the sure. Weeks, Weekses. And this is uh, Morgan, okay. which is African American. Mm -hmm. And also, we had, uh, he was Cassell. Co he was, like Cosell. Yes. Like, like the, the right. commentator that right. worked with Ali on it. But they all were representing Liberia at the World Court, you see. And these were European lawyers, female lawyers. Okay. Yeah. And this guy here? Uh, he was, I think, some ambassador or something, you know. But I didn't really get his name. So then, all right, okay, well. Wow. Liberian history, uh, thank God for William Tuckman, as he said, with his unification and integration policy, because it uh, really uh, gave some respect for those who were not African, Afro-Americans or Black Americans? Sure. You see, because it was a process of bringing the natives uh, with the, you know, like you're. Okay. Then, all right, all right. Now, I guess I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna come from this angle here. Right. All right. I heard Clarence Thomas say one time. He said. One of the judges, I think, that died, whatever, said to him, or oh, he may be still living, one of the chief justices said, I know how I got here, but Clarence, how did you get to be, you know, a uh, Supreme Court judge, you know? <laughs> because Clarence's family came through, which most black people, which all black people came through, Jim Crow law, right. segregation law, and most different things like mm -hmm. that. A right. white person didn't come through that. Right. Okay. So, my mindset and your mindset at this point in challenge. Right. When I see racism, I see white racism. But your mind, right? Mm -hmm. Your mind, I'm here to point at you. See, forgive me for pointing. Mm -hmm. But your mind, right. your mind sees anybody that can, can get that. To that level, to that depth, to be racist or classes and things like that, because your mind, uh, your formative years, were reared in Liberia. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, I'm Black American, right. so you could, so you see it. We can learn a whole lot from you because you see it. Oh yeah, you see it just like anybody. Can now, if you were at one of my marches or something like that, or one of t ten years ago, one of my uh, uh, sessions where we were talking about racism, mm -hmm. and you stood up and said, anybody can be that, most people here would say, what's wrong with that brother? Mm -hmm. We're not like that. Mm -hmm. But you experienced it mm -hmm. that your goal was to get to, to get the good job, to get the education mm -hmm. that you had to basically go through the Afro American, but you almost had to give up your identity to get over there. Mm -hmm. Where we say, well, we had to give up our identity. That's mm -hmm. why the great Muhammad Ali changed his name, and many people said, I don't want the white man's name. Mm -hmm. You understand me, mm -hmm. you know. People, you know, change the name. So, 
this is like, I don't know, man. So you, I'm you, confused. You still have, uh, you still have uh, uh, the name of uh, Slave Master. My last name is Jackson and my mother's family last name is Marshall, yes. Okay. But it don't bother me because my, my conscious right. is who represents me. Right. 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 And it's, it's something, uh, Mr. Jackson, uh, it's something, but like you say, I, I am a nature of two different worlds, two, yes. two continents. And even with that, my first job in America, as I, I was mentioning before when yes. I met you, it was in a factory. And I still remember when I came in, I had pass the test for Exxon because sure. just coming from, you know, working for an African president by the grace of God I did. And I but I wanted to get my social security into the system. Sure. So I uh, remember when he told me, You have on a three piece suit, you say you just want a job, I can send you to a factory and they will hire you but you have a three piece suit, go and change your clothes. Sure. But I said this to say that I was the only black man in the company at the time when they made me the manager sure. or supervisor as you call it and they promoted our white our brother. But uh, when I started uh, uh, officiating in that capacity I had. I remember the general manager's son hit me once in my neck and I, the vice president was not there that day, the Jew. And the first thing came to my mind is, uh, will you hit him back? Sure. And I thought about it, I said, because I was just 28 years old, I was strong. Sure. And I said, if I should hit him, I said the ambulances would be from every corner. Sure. Because I would, because he hit me in my neck. So I said, no, I held my neck. And his, the general manager came out. That was his son in law. And he didn't. Uh, Just us. Yeah, but uh, when the, the vice president came in, a Jewish man, and he heard it, he came and he walked up to me and shook my hands. He said, I heard what happened. He said, I respect you because in this country, I was born sure. in America. He said, for a white man to hit a black man, yes. he doesn't hit back. Yes. <laughs> but I knew that it was just going to be just so. I decided to just, like Sparkly said, do the right thing. Sure. And for that reason, I, uh, it was very smooth for me. You see, sure. it was smooth because the expression was, why did you put an African man over us? Sure. You see, but like I said, racism is, 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 is evil. It's evil all through history, it's evil. But, but, but from, your, from your experience of it, we are, all right, mm, man, I, I'm sweating myself. <laughs> yeah. um, um, no, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Um, you, uh, your experience of racism is so different than mine. Yes. Now, now I knew black folk that was uh, bougie, we call it, that thought that they were better. They lived in, let's say, Teaneck, or they might have lived in Upper Mount, Mount Clair, when many blacks didn't live there at the time. As a young man, you try to take your daughters, you know what I mean? There's another one having that, you know? Right. Um, but I don't ever, you know, remember in the history, I don't remember where black folks were so up there and had power like they would have in, in uh, Liberia mm -hmm. that I would have to be go the extra mile to, to, to get their understanding, you know what I mean? Or to get their uh, 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 right hands in fellowship. But in your country, that is what you basically had to do. You go to school and things like that. Now, let me ask you this, right? Because you're still young. You're 71 years old. And, and today, that's young. 
Mm -hmm. My father at um, 1978 was 60 years old. He was born in 1918, wow. my father. He was an old man mm -hmm. at uh, 60. I'll be 60 June 18th, and I don't feel 60, I, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't feel nowhere near uh, the age that my father felt at 60. My father oh, felt yeah. like an old man at 60. Oh, Moved yeah. like an old man too. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, at this point, you're 71, so do you ever come in contact with um, uh, Afro-American Liberians at your age? Oh, yeah. And, 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 and what is the connection? What is the brotherhood? Is there a brotherhood there now? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, based on uh, my principle of uh, just... Uh, always promoting the brotherhood of man. Sure. You know, so I, I, uh, like I say, I, my one verse that governs my life is that uh, Philippians 2, 3, and 4, always think others better than you or higher than you. Sure. Because, uh, Anyone, any human being who looks down at another human being because of uh, where you were born, sure. your tribe, or the color of your skin, or because your great-great-grandparents were slaves, I see them as very, uh, not only small people, sure. but ungodly and people who really have missed the mark of humanity because uh, I like what a white uh, woman, older woman, an instructor, she says that take the skin of any human being, all human the same. Sure, my mother always said that. And for any human being sure. to judge a person, as Dr. King said, is not the color of the skin but the contents of the character. Yes. And that's why not too long ago I mentioned about the rejected stone becomes the cornerstone. Yes, that's what that's where we met. That's what yes. we met. I heard you say it. I yes. It. And I felt it because my, my mother used to say something like this here. She said uh, something about the stool uh, will one day become the power. So I can't put it together right now. Mm -hmm. Is foggy by this, just this conversation itself, but wow, you know. And all right, I, I, I'm going to ask again the same question, I guess, in a different direction, a different way. All right, you always knew that your family was native, right? Once your family was adopted by the Coopers, right? All right, so that gave you almost like. Moses of Runway in Pharaoh's house, mm -hmm. but this Pharaoh here looked like you. Mm -hmm. At 71 years old, mm -hmm. when you meet an Afro Liberian, mm -hmm. okay, uh, what is your relationship? Mm -hmm. And I want you to be honest. Come on, this is we, we want we want honesty because we're trying to learn, yes. and, and, and I'm learning so much from you. Uh, I'm going to lean on you many times. Yeah. I'm learning a whole lot right here. Amen. 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 God is working. <laughs> let my people go. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. And yes, to sir. let them go, and the only way to let them go, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We first got to tell the truth, and the truth shall what set you free, mm -hmm. and this truth here is a truth that many of us did not know. Yeah. I knew it from a young man that was said he was native. And this young man was looked black. Mm -hmm. He had woolly hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said that we rose up and fought against yeah. the Afro. Mm -hmm. And I at that time I didn't know what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Kind of figure out some things, mm -hmm. kind of figure out there was some oppression. But 
in Liberia, if you show me this guy here, mm -hmm. and you say that's the guy that adopt your family, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the Cooper. Right. That's Mr. Cooper. Right. And this Mr. Cooper here mm -hmm. is black. Right. I mean, he's fair-skinned, but to me, he's black, because I come from fair-skinned people. Right, right. Just buried my brother in Florida, very fair-skinned. Wow. You know? And, uh, wow. This is deep. You know? And it's rooted in like I said, thank God for Dr. King, because when you look at a human being yes. and looking at him or her from the first judge by the color mm -hmm. or by the name, sure. uh, you have missed the mark because uh, uh, like my brother-in-law is complete native. He served under the first Liberian female president as her vice president. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's another thing. I, let me just interject here. Is the president, the vice president, I mean the president, the, the woman, where is her family natives or were they Afro? She had uh, white in her family. I think she too was a little because her dad or her was German, a white German. German from the United States? No, from Germany. From Germany. You see, so, but she, uh, I think her mother was uh, Gola, native, where well, my daddy too, they all came from that. So, in the process of uh, intermarriages, sometimes, and then over Liberia 1847, we had Germans that went over. In fact, our, uh, our Germans that uh, Today, so many, some Liberians went to Germany and married German women, sure. you know, so, but that's why I want to base it on the contents of the character and looking at a human being sure. as a creation of the most high. Sure, sure. And when all human beings can think, yes. as I said, Philippians 2, 3, and 4, always think others, even a little child, because many little children, God has given them, like you said, I don't want to really uh, uh, put this just on the biblical, you know. Because we want to we want to stick to the principles of yes. the government. Right. You know what I mean? That, that, so that's why I'm not, we're never shy away as a reverend myself, but we never shy away from the words of God. Right. But yes. the hands of man right. can be dangerous. That's correct. And these hands here that we seem, you understand, mm -hmm. for me as a black American, mm -hmm. as black American, is uh, my own hands. Mm -hmm. So what I've learned here, and let me say this to the audience, I guess I learned that, wow, power, yeah. the stuff that people will do for power. Yes. You for know, money, for, for wealth. Both power, wealth, money, yeah. prestige, you know. And especially uh, using that to suppress. Others of yes. their own group. Suppress Jeez. because of the color. Of the skin. That is... Wait, wait, wait. In this case here. Yeah. Of okay, the, see, all right, when you say because of the color, but in... In, in your case, case, in your case, because the of color the, was not too far right, from. Right, no, it was the, the your 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 background, your native, you know, origin. Right. Yes, and like I said, that is so. It is, it, and, and all over the world, anytime it's it's done to a human being, that's why the Liberian Civil War, it became. Just from the execution of the president, things fell apart because I was there sure. just before the execution when the first mass demonstration. We had to go. I went on radio because the president sent me to go and try to dispel rumors. I had my special assistant, uh, a lawyer, uh, Rupel Marsha, and uh, we all went to the studio and got on radio. He told told us, uh, I suggested that we spoke to the tribal chiefs sure. to talk to the people and tell them that. But the war was so bloody, basically, over 300,000 Liberians were killed, 
especially African Americans. Afro. -Americans. Yeah, Afro Americans, yes. because the natives use that as uh, an opportunity sure. to, and then a, a, a native had been put into power, a military man, uh, Sergeant Doe. He was a sergeant in, sure. the, in the military. And so it was like hell broke loose, you see. So my own brother was shot trying to get up, and he did his doctorate in economics. They shot him because of, they, they saw him and said, oh, you're one of those uh, uh, rich big shots, you know. And he said, no, I work for myself. Bam! You know. So the war was so bloody. And the big shot in this case might have been his own shade, his own brother. Yes. His own brother. Yes, own yes. But just because people get carried away by your place of origin, or unlike, like, unlike Liberia, but America, the color of your skin, or basically too, because now we got the brown people, and the, you know what I mean, and some from, South America, yeah. but it's something that human beings have really, and will always fail, because uh, we have United Nations now still struggling. But only, like you said, when I was bringing uh, the real uh, thing is that what you call uh, that love that supersedes the love of man. When people can have the love of God, and some don't care because they don't believe in, in right, God, right. but when you have that love that is rooted on, treat others the way you want to be treated, yes. then that is the beginning of unification, integration, uh, you know, uh, the, the beginning of collaboration all of the positive ingredients that constitute not only humanity, but the principles of governance sure. and democracy sure. and, you know, for buying of the people. But when people can treat others the way they want to be treated, sure. But we have failed as human beings all but, over the world. But, okay, yes. And, but let me ask you this here, coming from your frame of mind. My frame of mind would be rooted right here in America. Mm -hmm. My frame of mind is rooted with the state of Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, District of Columbia, um, um, New Jersey, I'm missing a state between there. Um, um, I can't think of the state, that, that bridge state. Uh, um, Delaware, I mean, that's the state I forgot. And then New Jersey, and of course, parts of New York. But your mind, right, you, you, when you look, you see something totally different because you have experienced that from, I guess, a lack of a better word, from your own people. And you fought and family had to be adopted and surrender your last name, I imagine, and things. And that's something that we did here mm -hmm. with, with the white folks that we, you know, did. You know, some people say that's why they changed their name or whatever. And things like that. So, wow. It's especially too when you can do it to your own kind because even in places like uh, uh, South America, all these uh, uh, dictators and everything else, they establish that hierarchy of uh, the elite and they exploit one another and, and that is one of the most painful things in the history of, of uh, mankind, you know, when you suppress individuals because they are not of your class, sure. you know, and because they are poor, 
because with poverty you have many insufficiencies. And then of course the uh, and many times too you look in the wild, the animals that are stronger, they go and lacerate the the weaker ones. You see, and sometimes well, that's an animal kingdom. Yes. The animal don't have intelligence right. where I mean but to see humans, Human do but all through history, it has been the, 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 the main objective was to, uh, you know, conquer, divide, True. and also to exploit. And, but uh, we thank God for civilized systems today that, have, that are trying to integrate and to a more or less uh, uh, characterize what I like democracy for by and of the people. And but even in the process we man will continue to fail. But we thank God. Sure. Like I say, uh, uh I have a lot of respect for President Biden because with the gifts that God has given me to see uh and discern, you know, uh nobody's perfect but when a person can put together uh, the agenda to share with the have-nots sure. and the unfortunate, yes. they score very well yes. because uh, this is in the arena of your own kind who bitterly resists sure. the sharing of the wealth of the nation yes. and uh, with the native people. Yes. That so anyone who can let me ask you this right yeah. here. When the Colony Society went to Liberia in nineteen forty eight, is that the time? Or forty seven? Eighteen forty seven. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Eighteen forty seven. Okay. How many people do you think were in Liberia? How many do you think Liberia has always had a, a small population. Now, I think just about five, six million. But uh, uh, it was, uh, you would say it was because when we were, when we uh, came up, we always were just under two million, you know, and later on we came up three, four, five, and six sure. million now. But Liberia was uh, really never populated like Nigeria, sure, yes, that sure. has uh, uh, almost 200 million, sure. you know, and other places. Liberia had a small uh, population, and but uh, like I said, it was always uh, uh, governed and dominated by African Americans of uh, Afro that. Uh, went back to the motherland and uh, I grew it right somewhere right here down on this spot here. And but uh, the very small Liberia is as big as Tennessee. In fact Tennessee is a little bigger than Liberia. Right. Okay my here, right here. Okay. Yeah, forty three thousand square miles. Used to be a little bigger but Sierra Leone cut some pieces of Liberia, you know. And, uh, but uh, this is to say that... Uh, but, let me say this right here. In 1848, the white man hadn't really ventured into Africa at that time, had he? He didn't go into it, the interior. No, it was just this, uh, this especially America, because uh, you have the French, the British, Parts of uh, the Germans way there in the north, uh, Zanzibar and Tanganyika, right. but uh, which, which is now Tanzania, right? But the Americans were not really involved, you know. Liberia was the the genesis of America's uh, uh, direct sure. uh, 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 connection with uh, with the motherland. And because America itself was under the British and became free, Liberia, America became independent in 1776. Sure. So 
up to this was less than a hundred years after America's independence that Liberia became independent. Sure. So, uh, but that was the America really was America. That's why Liberia is the only country in Africa that was never colonized because when America started ascending, uh, <clears throat> gaining uh, 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 bigger than, than Great Britain or stronger, uh, the world was beginning to uh, step back. That's why they never colonized Liberia because they always thought that Liberia was an American colony. Sure. Yes. And of course, thank God for Roosevelt and others who uh, uh, was just like an eagle just protecting, you know, Liberia. Okay. Yes. But uh, Liberia was just. Uh, Ethiopia was the oldest in the beginning, but she lost it to Italy, sure. to Mussolini. Right. So Liberia now is the oldest independent country. When Liberia was 100 years old, Africa was still called the Dark Continent. Sure, sure. The Dark Continent.